Hey, my name is Steven Brooks and here we are on the Conscious Goods Alliance uh, Veggie Bus. This bus here is a 1984 Van Hool and it used to be a car rental shuttle and uh, we converted it into a uh, sustainable roadshow uh, showroom. And uh, this right here is made from coconut. This countertop and these floors are made from coconut wood. And what happens is coconut plantations, they usually produce for around 20, 30 years and then they start slowing production. So rather than just cut them down and burn them, they um, actually mill them into small boards. And that's what this flooring and uh, countertop is. This countertop is made from recycled paper, a company called Paper Stone. And it's actually 60% recycled paper mixed with a tree resin. It's uh, pretty incredible. Um, we have all these outlets run off solar panels on the roof, which you should check out. Um, this stove here runs on denatured alcohol. And uh, rather than using um, kerosene or you know, ga natural gas, we use. The, the wood thing first? Yeah. I was about to say that your, your stove top looks a lot like a laptop computer. Oh, yeah, <laughs> which is charging here off the sun. Pretty amazing. And how many, uh, how many computers can you charge at once? Um, you could charge as several. I mean, as many plugs as we have, which I think we have two, four, six uh, plugs. Right. And uh, yeah, this is all this paneling is bamboo. And bamboo is so incredible because from planting to harvesting is just around seven or eight years. And it's totally renewable as opposed to you know, cutting down old growth forests to make really simple, you know, things that, you know, it's just totally a waste. You know, those trees take thousands of years to grow and to cut them down into boards and stuff it's totally not sustainable especially when there's alternatives um how long does it take for the bamboo to grow oh it takes about eight years from when you plant it to when you could you know start cutting it this is made this is pressed and made into these um into these boards in china mm -hmm. um these cushions are made from natural latex rubber and it's actually rubber from a tree so again it's totally renewable as opposed to a synthetic rubber um and then they're all covered with hemp and then this is all hemp and uh, yeah, we're on the road all the time. Dry, we're almost kind of like, uh, I, I'll never forget, um, this whole bus started, this tour, these stores started, we were running tours from San Francisco to Costa Rica on recycled vegetable oil. And I'll never forget, I think it was in Honduras or in uh, Nicaragua, the front page of the newspaper, the, uh, the uh, headline was um, Misioneros Ecologicos Llegó, which means uh, the ecological missionaries have arrived. And it really feels like that. We just drive around spreading uh, um, alternatives. Alternatives in not only building like the way we built this bus, but the, to the fuel that we use, to the clothes that we wear, to the foods that we eat, and most importantly, just to the way we treat each other and live together in community on this bus. And uh, it's incredible when we pull into a town or we pull into a Whole Foods parking lot or wherever we're going, we bring um, really good vibes and people feel that. And um, yes, we are supported and by you know, companies like Dr. Bronner's and Pet Promise, New Chapter, Copali Organics. And uh, these companies, sure, they want to get mark a bang for their buck for their marketing dollar. But more than anything, it's working together to uh, really think out of the box in the way we uh, merchandise and promote our products. Really trying to, while promoting the products, we're really trying to promote um, alternatives. And uh, it's been really great. Nice. Um, where, where, um, how did it start? So uh, I, I lived down in Costa Rica on the southern Caribbean coast right near the Panama border. And uh, I was sitting there one day and um, my friend looked at me and goes, you know, Stephen, this is really cool what you've done. The, the homes, you know, all built from fallen trees and the solar panels. And, you know, I've never seen anybody making methane from their own septic system and cooking with it in their kitchen. And all these things and the groups of students, all these things you're doing are really neat. You know, but how many times a year you fly back to the States? And I was like, ah, you know, three, four times is like, well, did you know that every time you fly on a plane for three hours, each seat in the plane uses the fuel as if you were driving your car for 800 hours without stopping? And I was like, oh, no way. What are we going to do about it? And uh, that was May of 2003. November 10th, 2003, we left San Francisco in two um, retrofitted school buses and a truck, 26 of us um, running on recycled vegetable oil. And we drove to Costa Rica. And then we did it again in 2004. And we didn't want to stop doing these vegetable you know, oil, alternative fuel demonstration um, on the road. Um, so we started this food company, Copali Organics, and said, you know what, let's keep the buses going. Instead, we'll couple it with a brand. You know, originally it was just our brand, but we couldn't afford to keep doing it. So we brought in other brands. And then all of a sudden we're like, wait a minute, this is incredible. There, 
you know, typical business is like my brand against your brand. Now it's like several brands coming together to really try to seek solutions to, you know, can we do business and not destroy the planet? I think we can. And uh, I think there's uh, many different companies are really starting to think that way where, you know, where sure, the bottom line of profits is super important. But now there's a lot of companies starting to feel like, you know, as important as the profits that we make are how are we affecting the, the, the planet and how are we affecting all the people that work along the chain and uh, really trying to create um, transparent supply chains. It's like we are buying this food from these farmers for this much and then we sell it to the store for this much. And there's no reason we shouldn't have to hide that. Um, the only reason why we would hide that if we're making obscene margins or, you know, we're doing something wrong or illegal, you know, it's like if we're doing everything righteous and we're taking care of all the people along our supply chain we should want to promote that and and we should want to scream that message mm -hmm. what's the future for this for the bus well we have a second bus that we just that we bought a little bit ago it's out in new york i think we're going to retrofit it and do a whole kind of just vote kind of tour where we um uh, along with the sustainable living roadshow where we go and visit many um you know the democratic convention the republican convention many you know around the vote get all over the country not only promoting alternatives, but just, yeah, just promoting change. Um, we, uh, it says on the side of the bus, and I think it's so important, is we vote with our dollars. Every day, the money that we spend and the companies that we support, we basically vote for the way they do business. We vote for the way they treat their workers. We vote for the way they treat the environment. So it's really important to vote wisely with your dollars, and uh, that's what we go around promoting.